Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's preview, Australia versus Wales this weekend and should be a very interesting game. We're talking about two teams that have basically pressed the reset button. Two coaches who are very new to uh, the team. It'll actually be Joe Smith's first game in charge of Australia. And I think he's going to revolutionize this Australian side. Maybe not to winning World Cups, for example. I just don't think they've got the players and um, and, and the resource to do that. I think if they've kept all the players that were sort of making the move to rugby league, for example, and you could even attract some of the rugby league players, they probably could. Um, but I do think that Joe Smith is going to make them competitive. I think he's going to make them a much better side. And if they're willing to give him the time, I'm very interested to see with what the tools that they give him, what he can do. Um, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have time. He's got a British Life Lions series next season. And so this is really the start of, of him trying to become as competitive as possible, as quickly as possible. For Warren Gatland, a bit more time for him, and, and, and maybe even seeing that in the kind of selections that we are seeing. Very, very interesting side that has been named um, by Wales. A Wales side that have not won a game this year. Um, not won a game in a while, actually, to be fair. And, uh, you know, losing becomes a habit. So they very much need to kick this habit. And I would say it was not a golden opportunity for, for Wales to go and beat Australia. But I do think that's Australian side. Not a bad side, an interesting side. Um, and I think under Joe Schmidt, they'll be so keen to, to prove themselves, for example, and get over the line that I kind of expect them probably to do just that. Before we look at the teams, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. We'll start with the home side, which are the Australians. And... Um, it is going to be uh, an interesting one. Liam Wright captains the side in his 89th. Uh, so he become the 89th one of his captain when he leaves the side out this weekend. And uh, not the most experienced player, is he, at five tests in. So it's a very interesting selection of captain by Joe Schmidt. You know, snubbing the likes of a James Slip with 134 uh, test caps, for example. Uh, Rob Valentini with 39 caps. You know, there are, a lot of, there are players there which you would make sort of make sense. Um, it's not the most experienced Australian side if you take away those two sort of, um, I think it's like three players that have got sort of, you know, plus 30 tests. Uh, but let's get into it, shall we? In the front row, there is experience. James Slipper has got Matt uh, Faisler and Tina Tupo next to him. James Slipper, 134 tests. Uh, Tina Tupo has got 50 tests to his name, so almost 200 between those two makes up kind of the five tests in the middle. In the second row, a debut for Jeremy Williams. Who will start next to uh, Lucken Salakai Loto, um, who's a bit more experienced there. So interesting to see how Jamie Williams goes. Uh, you know, Joe Schmidt already willing to take a few risks, for example, has got a couple of inexperienced players. Uh, another bench, another day we're coming off the bench as well. Um, if we look at the back row there, uh, it's a good back row, it's an exciting back row. Liam Wright, the captain, is joined by Fraser McWright, who's kind of the Michael Hooper prodigy, and then Rob Bellatini, a very reliable player. Um, is Rob Valentini and uh, I, I enjoy watching him. I think when he's when he's on song, he's he's a very very nice player to watch. Loves to have ball in hand, nice physical presence, good athlete around the park. Um, Jake Gordon will partner uh, Noah Lulesio. Uh, it's an interesting time, isn't it, moving forward uh, for for the number ten? You know, they he's not really going to back. Well, Carter Gordon obviously has sort of made the, the move to go back to uh, to league. He's not going to really go back to. A, a, a Quay Cooper. So um, we'll try and get him back into the, into the set of setup. So no less who was, in, there's a lot invested in him, and then kind of sort of dropped off, is back. Uh, he has played 17 tests. So he was, you know, supposed to be the next big thing, but um, hasn't didn't really sort of take the opportunity and sort of cement his place. He now has that opportunity. If you look at the back three, uh, Filippo Adagno, Andrew Kellaway, and Tom Wright. And in the center is Hunter Basami, who for me is a fantastic player, uh, next to uh, Josh Fluke, who's making his debut as well. So uh, interesting to see how he goes next to Hunter Basami, who I'm a big fan of. I think that, you know, I think he'll become a regular under Joe Schmidt and uh, will become one of the stars of the back line, will be one of the key players there. Uh, if you look at the bench then, uh, Billy Pollard with a single test cap, Isaac Keller, uh, potential debut, and then the experience of Alan Toa. You then got Angus Blythe, Charlie Cale, Tom Lanark, and Dylan Pish all on potentially debut uh, for the Wallabies. Just Tate McDermott joining in the likes of Billy Pollard and Alan Toa with having already been capped. Uh, if we look at what um, Josh Bennett had to say, keep the sword and sip, saying, uh, the squad has worked hard over the last week or so to prepare as best we can for what's going to be an incredibly tough test against Wales. Don't give too much away. 
um, over there. But uh, very, very interesting, as I said. He's is re- running the changes. This is the new dawn for Wallabies rugby. And if you then look at the Welsh side, for example, Warren Gatton also making a few changes. A couple of players back in the system, obviously, uh, now that we're back in the test window compared to the side that played against the Springboks, four more players available. So in the front row, it is Garrett Thomas, Dewey Lake, Archie Griffin. Dewey Lake retains the captaincy. I think that until um, we see more consistency in, in this Welsh side, I, I do think Dewey Lake, as one of the few players who I think is a definite starter, um, it will, will be will be all captain for, for the time being. I'm um, very interested to see who the sort of the, the ongoing, the, the, the official sort of captain will be for Wales because you won't get not really making um, that kind of decision. Uh, in the second row, though, it is uh, Christ Tunes, uh, the youngster next to Daph Jenkins, who I really do rate. I think that uh, he's a big player for Wales. And, you know, they always sort of wondered how they're going to replace Alan Wynne Jones. Not saying that Daph Jenkins is going to suddenly become Alan Wynne Jones. But I do see a lot of him in it, and I do think he's got a lot of talent. Uh, the back row is Tame Plantry, who continues to uh, sort of up his stocks, getting his uh, third cap, sorry, fourth cap. He's next to Tommy Rafael, who returns to the side next to Aaron Wainwright, who makes his 50th appearance um, for uh, Wales, six years after making his debut. Uh, if you then look at the back line, Ellis Bevan continues to get backed after that uh, first cap against the box, and Ben Thomas gets an opportunity. So Sam Castillo actually drops out of the uh, first line 15 down to the bench. Rio Dyer um, is next to Liam Williams, who shifts back to full back to accommodate a debut for Josh Hathaway, plays for Gloucester and uh, will get his first round for Wales this weekend. Uh, Mason Grady and Owen Watkins will reignite their partnership in the midfield. Not entirely sure it's the best position for Mason Grady. I love him on the wing. I also think at 13 is probably where he could flourish. But um, such a big physical presence, uh, it's difficult to move him away, really, from that inside center position. Off the bench, it is Evan Lloyd, Kempsey Matthias, and Harry O'Connor. Um, a, a whopping eight caps between the three of them. You then got uh, Corey Hill with a few more caps. Uh, James Botham, Kieran Hardy, Sam Costello, and Nick Tompkins. So we're well, good to have Nick Tompkins back. I think he's an important player as well for Wales. It's an interesting side for, for both sides. Um, more experience, I think, officially in um in australia's uh side but not by much i mean and, and again mostly sort of in amongst sort of one or two players there's well side uh, owen Watkins, liam williams for example gareth thomas Aaron wainwright are more experienced players they're going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting um as far as uh, in terms of um keeping calm and, and and what it's like to play overseas in away conditions but a lot of youngsters on display on both sides so that should be quite exciting let me know your score predictions down in the comments below smash a like on the video subscribe to the channel as well thank you very much for watching my name is steve and i'll chat to you soon